As you may know, I already have pretty decent tutorial for Turkish coffee brewing on the channel, but today we're going to make it even better, at least for some coffee. I'm going to brew two cups of coffee and show you what I mean. Here is what we'll fix. Sometimes Turkish coffee is not complex enough. And this was true when I brewed Starbucks coffee. When I tried it in espresso maker, it had more flavors, specifically cherry. And Aspartame boy left the comment saying that the coffee wasn't heated long enough. And he is correct. Here's why. And clear what is the taste. It's like too, too flat. Dark notes, but the layer is pretty thin. Compared to espresso, it's like pretty boring cup. We have thin in coffee. The higher the temperature, the more complexity you will get in a cup. And this is especially true for mocha pot, because it has enormous temperature. Same works for brewer coffee. If you want more complexity, more flavors, more intensity, you just increase water temperature. But mostly it ruins the flavor when you increase the temperature, so delicate notes will go away. They will be overpowered by chocolate notes. And yes, this makes cup more intense, but complexity is dropped, at least for delicate coffee. But if coffee turns out relatively mellow, you can easily increase the water temperature and it will be more complex. At least that's the rule. That's in practice how it works. Let's prepare for some practice. Well, you have some coffee. It's not acidic and it's not super fancy like specialty coffee. No acidity. That's the sign. And the second sign, it has some nuts and chocolate on the package as a flavor. In this case, you probably should brew it for longer. Because there is simply no delicate notes and there is nothing to preserve, so you can brew towards dark notes easily, without worrying that you will ruin your coffee. Usually in any coffee, in any brewery method, we have a taste change which looks like this. Acidic notes and weak, balanced, and then bitter notes and intensity. And for lighter coffee, it's better to brew it within this range, and bitter coffee probably within this range. So it's basic coffee towards bitterness, and here will be our balance. So here will be the balance for basic coffee. And here, towards sweetness, like here, will be our acidic coffee. Maybe. Like, balance will be here. That's why when we brew in acidic coffee, we target this zone. And ba basic coffee, this zone. Simple. So, as you can see, balance shifts depending on your coffee. If it's acidic coffee, you have balance here. And then it shifts when you have basic coffee. Towards chocolate and nuts. You need to brew it here. And the only way to find out which one is works for your coffee is to try it. Try this one and try this. And let me warn you right away, the longer you brew, the more intensity will be in your cup and it will be harder to drink. So, if you're going to brew longer to, towards this zone, you probably need small jasper, because it will be very hard to drink 150 milliliters, 15 grams of coffee. In this case, like 5 to 10 grams, maybe 12, it's enough. I'm gonna brew this Milk Ethiopia, which I've shot already. Ground coffee, like two months old. Yeah, two months. And we will see how it tastes like with light foam, which is our this zone. And with the higher extraction, this zone. So there will be a full wrap and there will be start of the wrap from edges. But let's recap the knowledge quickly. We can regulate extraction visually by foam motion and foam color. First step. Mix the coffee at one minute after you've put it on heat to get the white foam, which will give us the control of the foam color. Otherwise, you will not see the foam. You need to get the white foam first. Then it will start to change the color. Central spot will be bright and then go darker. And while this happens, the foam will have a wrapping motion. When it covered the bright spot completely, that means the extraction is pretty high. If coffee just started to rub, it could be weak and even acidic. When it fully rubbed, it could be bitter or too intense. 
Then goes the swirling, but we will not keep it that long. And now I'm waiting for some motion, whichever starts to rub on the sides first. This one seems to have the motion first. As you can see, rim started to go dark and I'm taking it off. Aroma is not nice, by the way. It's like, yeah. And we see the signs of the foam formation wrapping, but it goes slowly. Yeah, it will start to boil. It needed to be mixed once again, possibly. And let's consider it a full wrap. So here is our lighter foam and here is our darker foam. But I'm not sure about this one. We could brew it better. We should have mixed it. If this one is light, this one is dark. Like stale coffee, something like stale aroma. Plain. Nothing too exciting here. Maybe some interesting notes, but not that intense and a little bit dusty. This more like caramel group nuts in terms of aroma. So it's like darker aroma without these funky notes of staleness. Cup is more intense, but at home I brewed better. As you've seen, foam started to go up like very slowly and weirdly because of the shape of the jasper. It's not too flat and it can't heat up that much heat transferring is a little bit a little bit worse than in another jazz and it uh, took longer to heat up to proper temperature and because of this the layer is formed incorrectly we needed to mix it at two minutes around two minutes why are we doing this because we have co2 released from coffee particles when we mix it and co2 floats with the oils up and in this case the temperature of the water at one minute wasn't enough. So if you have big jasva, you can mix at two minutes if you brew it like six minutes. And you can just pour 60 degrees water in jasva, pour the coffee and then mix and it will be better in terms of the CO2 release because it will be 100% reliable way to take off the CO2 in order to get white foam. Anyway, let's try coffee once again. I mean, it's not super bad, but it lacks some layers. It's like one layer. It's thin, pretty thin taste. While here is bold. It's like you feel the layers. Yeah, no blank spaces. Maybe an aftertaste, but it could be fixed with proper brewing. So I'll probably make this coffee once again with the full wrap in order to show you how it should look like. Another level. Just three levels higher. So here is our light foam. As you've seen, I needed to mix it pretty heavily. Here is the motion started to drop a little bit from the sides and started to go darker a little bit from the rim. And I will say when I could have taken it off for the light rust and almost there to the moment when I take it for light light work up like here I will take it off and we wait for a full wrap to cover this light spot and have a little bit of lift so you've seen full wrap I will. Coffee is even now, and a little bit of crack, and take it off. So I'm waiting even for, after it lifted, I'm waiting for some crack or 
at least for some like five ten seconds more in order to keep it brewing on a higher temperature and it's time to try in a hot cup aroma is even more fruity pronounced sweet yeah some hints of stone fruit I'm not sure if it's apricot or something like this but it's sweet and fruity definitely some new layers of complexity and new taste new flavors so that's it for today hope you've learned something and leave a like leave a comment order jazz if you like 